This is Books In Short, and you are listening the summary of how clients buy. To get to the top in big firms, professionals must be rainmakers. In small firms, rainmaking means survival. Business development in general is an uphill fight. It's even more of a challenge for professional firms. No matter how good you are at your profession, to succeed in a large firm or an independent practice, you have to become a rainmaker, someone who regularly brings in new clients. This is true for all professionals, attorneys, accountants, architects, business consultants, and everyone else. Selling a service is different from selling things. Professional firms of any size can't survive without rainmakers. Yet, most young professionals have no idea how to make it rain. Clients don't buy professional services like they buy other products. Most products are tangible. Clients can compare their features against other products' features. Selling professional services is completely different from selling tangible goods. In professional services, the people with expertise are the product. Only three product features matter, reputation, referral and relationships. Quote. Young professionals learn to do their work but not how to get the work. Lawyers, accountants, architects, in fact, anyone who provides a professional service to others, learned how to perform superior work in college and graduate school. The harsh imperative of consulting and professional services is that being smart about something is not enough. You have to know how to engage with potential clients. While law school and medical school professors teach the sophisticated intricacies of their professions, they don't teach student. T.S. How to line up new clients or patients. Some professional or graduate schools tend to consider sales, as a discipline, to be beneath the academy. Selling professional services has always been difficult and is now more difficult than ever. In the past, professional codes of ethics didn't allow professional firms in the United States to advertise. This posed a huge challenge for firms that were trying to draw clients. In the late 1970s, however, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that attorney advertising was a form of commercial speech, so no. One can suppress it. Once they could advertise, professional firms marketed their services freely. There is only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. Oscar Wilde, The Picture of Dorian Gray. With this new freedom, the number of professional firms skyrocketed. Even though firms could advertise, the many new entries in their markets made it difficult for professionals to differentiate themselves from other firms in their sectors. Competition among them grew increasingly fierce. Don't think of business development as selling, think of it as solving client problems. The biggest business development mistake a professional can make is to operate with a salesperson's point of view. That isn't what clients want. As a professional, you must always consider your client's point of view. Clients don't want to be sold anything by anybody. They want to engage professionals who can solve their problems. Speak with clients as someone who can do exactly that. Instead of prospecting, cold calling, presenting and closing, all classic sales activities, the work you do to develop your professional business must be more subtle and refined. It shouldn't involve high-pressure selling tactics. In fact, it shouldn't involve any selling. Consider a case history. While attending a business conference, consultant Max Shields enjoyed a presentation by Peter Tyre, CEO of the laser technology firm Peak Phototonics. Tyre discussed his firm's advanced technology, and mentioned that it hadn't yet commercialized its sophisticated products. Tyre, a physicist, had no business training or expertise. Shields was confident he could help Tyre's firm. He reviewed Tyre's biography on LinkedIn. He asked a mutual LinkedIn connection to introduce them. She sent an introductory email, and the two men met several times. They discussed Tyre's firm, its high-tech products and Shields's ideas on how Tyre could make his lasers commercially viable. These meetings had no formal agenda, but Tyre liked Shields's ideas. Clients buy when they know who you are, know what you do, feel like what you do is relevant to their goals, think you can do the job and trust you. Quote. After six months of meetings, Tyre asked Shields to help with a marketing project. Shields agreed, developed a proposal and submitted it, along with a schedule and his fees. Tyre accepted the proposal. After a year of successful collaboration, they worked together on a second project. This illustrates how professional business development can progress. Design thinking can assist professionals with business development. In his 1969 book The Sciences of the Artificial, Herbert A. 
Simon introduced the concept of design as a way of thinking in the sciences. Since the 1990s, design thinking has expanded from science to the design world to the world of business, offering design as a way of solving problems. This has a lot of applicability in professional services. When we think about the need to increase our business by doing more business development, our stomach tightens. It is not something we were taught. Quote. Professionals can use design thinking to understand how clients envision the services they need and what format these services should take. To take a design thinking approach, don't concentrate on specific sales-oriented activities to engage new clients. Instead, focus on exploring the client's experience. Professionals should ask, how do clients buy? Clients take seven steps when they decide to contract with a professional services firm. All expert service providers sell services under circumstances in which the client has to trust them implicitly. Think of these steps as helping your clients meet their seven basic needs. The client should be aware of you and your company. Introduce yourself through networking. Let potential clients know of your genuine interest in them. Target the 200 most influential people in your industry and explore ways to make sure they learn about you. Attend conferences. Use a blog, podcast or newsletter, or write articles and white papers to showcase your and your firm's expertise. Maybe host a best practices roundtable. The client knows how you and your firm are unique, tell potential clients about your areas of expertise. You can communicate this information, but the prospect has to remember it. To make a lasting impression, you need a niche area of expertise and a memorable elevator speech. Be able to explain what you do, who you assist and what makes you exceptional. Clients must see your work as relevant and valuable, even when the prospect knows who you are, what you do and why you're special, it won't help if the prospect has no interest in retaining you. Whether the client decides to hire you depends on two factors, one, is the service you offer relevant to your prospects attaining their goals, and two, can you accomplish something positive for them. Demonstrate that you can solve problems for every prospect you pursue. Clients have to trust that you can help them, it's your job to win the prospect's trust. Be credible and deliver on your promises. Demonstrate that your professional assistance will be good for them. Share your track record of helping other clients. Discuss the positive impact you have had on their operations. Clients must find you trustworthy, comfortable to do business with, honest and focused on their best interests, nor. Western University marketing professor Kent Grayson explains that you need three attributes to win a client's trust, competence, honesty, and benevolence. Clients need the money, corporate structure and ability to purchase your services, is the prospect able to move ahead with hiring you. Pre-qualify clients to make sure they have the funds, organizational support and authority to contract with you. Public Relations Pro Karen Swim believes that pre-qualification offers a genuine opportunity to establish a good fit between your firm and the prospect. Is the prospect's representative empowered to hire you? If not, ask your original contact to direct you to someone in the firm who is. The client's timing has to mesh with yours, you can do everything right, but if the timing is wrong, you won't win the prospect. Be patient. Stay in touch. Wait for the right moment to reopen your case. Professionals need to follow practice development principles. The most important one is to do good work. A young professional seeking clients should do good work and build a positive reputation. Product and credence goods are sold very differently. Clients do not buy credence goods based on features or attributes, they buy consulting and professional services based on intangible criteria. Follow several time-tested tips from top rainmakers. Become your own chief revenue officer, no matter how large your firm grows, even if it employs thousands of people, each professional should be responsible for his or her own business development. Otherwise, you'll end up depending on others for your work. Build your network. Proper networking means developing relationships strong enough that you can ask for the business. Clients hire professionals whom they hold in high regard or who come with recommendations. The more people know and trust you, the more opportunities you will have to secure new engagements. Develop your own style, don't parrot other rainmakers in your firm. Be yourself, and develop your personal style. Dedicate time for business development, devote your attention to the work in front of you, knowing that one day that work will be done. Constantly renew your professional practice. Set aside a portion of each day for business development. 
Stay persistent and positive in the face of turndowns. In new business development, hearing no comes with the territory. Accept prospects' negative responses without losing faith. Despite the global economy, all business, including all professional business development, is local. People want to do business with people they know and like. In the global economy, giant professional firms open satellite offices in major cities across the planet. The professionals in those offices work to develop relationships within the local business communities. In consulting and professional services, substance matters, and experts who are known to be worth their weight in gold needn't be charmers. It's nice if they're nice, but nice isn't necessary. For example, the architecture and engineering firm AECOM has 87,500 employees. Some of its best-known projects include the World Trade Center, Central Wan Chai Bypass, China National Convention Center, Moses Mabita Stadium and the Abu Dhabi International Airport. To stay local, AECOM set up hundreds of offices, including more than a dozen in China. It knows that getting heard today in a maddeningly noisy global marketplace can seem ridiculously hard. To engage with clients globally, you need offices in major cities so you can connect with prospects who require your intelligence, education and experience to solve their specific problems.